Hello Hypersprinters, this is DJ VJ from the Hypersprint Forms, uh, showcasing my new multi-game feature for Hyperlaunch 2. So some of you have been guessing on what it possibly could be. Yes, you are right. Uh, I just want it to be a surprise. So uh, let me hit on some new changes to Hyperlaunch 2 first uh, to help migrate to Hyperspin 2 once it's out. Uh, we're going to go to a uh, three any setup, which is your settings any, which will contain keys that are not, uh, that you wouldn't want to change on a per system basis, like global, um, global stuff like your exit key, your script key, your paths. These you only want to set in one place and only have to worry about them in one spot. So that will be your keys found on your settings any. All right, global settings. This is keys found in, or well, found that will, will globally set things on a per system basis and well, and for all systems. All right, so you don't have to set them on each system. So what I mean is, it'll have the same any keys found in global settings as you would find in a per system. All right, so you have all, you have all your multi-game stuff right here. You have all your multi-game stuff right here too. All right, and your stuff, same goes for fade, and you also fade will be here also. All right, so when you want them to use your global setting, you have your global, use global value, and it'll use whatever you have set in your global setting any. All right, so your new keys are gonna be for multi-game, which get automatically added, you don't have to worry about that your key to bring up the GUI itself, uh, your select key to select the game, and your exiting key in case you want to exit out. Uh, and then these are your new any keys to control the GUI itself. All right. So I'm going to show you everything on my test script that uh, is a lot faster than having to launch through Hyperspin to show you all the different features. So let's go down and one by one. Uh, we're going to have background color this is an alpha RGB format first two is your transparency the next six are your color so I will first show you what this looks like alright so there you go this is going to be the default look of what it your multi-game GUI will look like the first time you launch it. Uh, these images, it downloads automatically from the Hyperspin site. It will only download the image for the media type of the game that you have running. So I'm going to show you uh, Sony PlayStation as an example. It downloaded a CD uh, PNG to populate this GUI with. If you use like a cartridge based system, it can download a cart or like a floppy based system, it'll download what looks like a floppy disk. Uh, so you can have um, per media type images also uh, for whatever the, the GUI supports. All right. So here we have Sony PlayStation. Uh, I have my test game as Final Fantasy VII, which has three disks. Uh, what it does is it, it, it looks at your launched game from Hyperspin, it finds this information in the ROM name, which you have to use uh, a standard naming format, uh, and then it, it finds all the games that match it. So it knows, let's say you launch disk one, it knows to look for disk two and disk three, and it'll show one image for each disk. All right, so you can use your arrow keys to move around. All right. Let's go back to here. So what you saw was a black background, not transparent, which is FF. Um, side padding is a percentage or a decimal. Uh, point two would be you want 20% of your unused space saved uh, to have padding on the left and right side of the, the images. So that'll kind of push the images in or out. So you say you want 30%, change that to 0.3. Uh, 
now it pushes everything closer together and it keeps everything evenly spaced. All right. Uh, y offset is how far from the bottom of the screen you want the images to show. So you want to move them down, you use a lower number. And now they're closer to the bottom. All right. Uh, with this setting, you can also move your images to the, all the way to the top if you want them at that on that part of the screen. All right. Uh, image adjust is going to be a multiplier of if you want to shrink or grow the images. You want them two times the size. You can make them two times the size in giant. You want them slightly smaller. Use a decimal. And now they're tiny. Uh, the image is, um, oh sorry, the text is only going to give you the width of whatever the image is. So you want to, you, you want obviously, you, you, you won't use a tiny image like this. But this is just to show you what, what happens if you go too small. Set that back. Your font is going to be you can use any font that you have in Windows. Default is Arial, because every system should have that. Uh, so I already showed you what that one looks like. Let's use a different font I have installed. All right, you can change to anything that Windows has in your fonts directory. So pretty much anything you have in here, they can use as long as it's installed. Show you one more. Give you the idea of what you can do. There you go. It changes it on all the text on the screen. All right. Text one options. Text one is the text in the middle of the screen. That's the what you saw. Please select the game. X Y locations of it. Uh, your width of your text. If you want it centered. The color of the text applies same alpha RGB rules. Uh, this is your quality, which you can see down here. This will be on, on the guide, so you can reference that information. The size of it, so you want giant text, you can make it giant text. You can pretty much control anything you want. Now you have giant text. You can make it bold, italic, whatever you like. Everything is pretty much described over here. There's only your four formatting options, which you have a ton. All right. Uh, this is what you want it to say in the middle of the screen. Uh, text two options is text two is the stuff above the images. So disk one, disk two, disk three. You can't control the text itself, but you can control what it looks like. Your offset is how far off from the image you want it to appear. Negative value will bring them down. Positive value will move them up off the image. Use sound is uh, true by default. That plays a nice little sound as you move around and navigate. All right, that's the default pitch, 300. You can change the pitch of it. So let's say you want to make it a little higher pitched. Alright, you can go pretty high and very low, whatever you like. Alright, exit effect. When you select a game and hit your select key, uh, which is by default is enter, this will be the, the animation that it gives. By default is none, I have it set to grow. Alright. Alright, so you select your game and the image grows slightly. The other option right now is pixelate. Select the game and it pixelates. All right. Uh, select effect, a selected effect. Uh, default is going to be grow. So you already saw that. I'll just show you, point it out. So you see how the image slightly grows as you select it. You know, as you as you navigate. That's grow. 
the other option I'll show you in a little bit. Use game art. All right, so you can. Uh, this what th this does is when you set this to true, it'll pull your artwork from your media system images, whatever directory you have in here. You set uh, right here your artwork directory or your art directory. So I've set the artwork one. It's gonna pull the images that match the names of my discs automatically. Oh yeah, also this is a new folder, which is where your default images get stored. So we have that set to true. So let's see what happens. There you go. So it found the artwork to match the ROM names and it showcases them here. All right. Now, since this is a CD based system, your other option for your selected effect is to rotate. There you go. Now you can, it'll show you the image rotating. I think that's very cool. You probably don't want to use that if it's showing a cartridge or, or a floppy disk or something. All right. Uh, so what else? What else? Next would be one last thing to finish off the look would be backgrounds. So you probably noticed it looked kind of dull, even with the images, solid colors. So you want to go the extra mile and use backgrounds. You can do that. Let's move this the default into your multi-game directory. Now it's going to pull as a default for the system a background image instead of a solid color. All right, you don't have to set anything to make that appear. It's just as long as it's in the folder, it'll use that instead of a solid color. All right. So that looks pretty complete, doesn't it? And you can go a step further and have per background images, uh, sorry, per ROM images, They have to match the ROM name. And now you can have per ROM background images along with the per game media images. So I know you artists will have fun with this one. It's just too bad uh, this is a feature that you don't really use too often, but it's a really nice finishing touch. And I know it's been a, a long requested feature. Uh, nobody's ever really worked on it as far as I know. Nor any other front end has this. Alright. Uh, what else did I not cover? Let's see. I think that is it. So your artwork directory, you set this to whatever directory your artwork is in. Uh, that artwork 2, artwork 3, artwork 4, you can set it to any directory you want, but it has to be located in your images folder. All right. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Now let's show you in Hyperspin itself what this looks like. Okay, you got, let's, I'm going to choose disk 2 and show you how this works launched my game uh, it's not going to show you full screen it does work um, the reason why is because my recording application doesn't like recording in full screen All right. just keep in mind it's a little slower because it's launching from my server
and also the audio was going to skip a little bit because for some reason my system or the settings I have in Zebra don't really work too well. I spend all my time making modules and Hyper Launch 2 stuff that I don't really spend the time to set up the system. So let's skip ahead. I'll show you what I mean. Just bear with me. It's a little slow. Your system won't be like this. Unless you're launching from a really slow hard drive, a slow server. Okay. So, we're on this too. I'm going to try creating a new game. Yes, that sound skipping is because the emulator is slow. Might also be because uh, I'm recording. So, I'm, I'm doing a little too much. It's an older computer. Alright, so now you have your, your screen. Insert disk 1 because you can't start a new game on this too. So, I'm going to press my hotkey bring up the GUI uh, and again it's a little bit a little bit lag because it has to read all the information from my server so this is all real stuff uh, this is not a test script this found all the games for oh that matched the launch game from hyperspin alright so I want to insert this one Alright, so what happened is it just, Daemon Tools just changed my mounted image to disk 1. Now I hit my key to continue. And the intro movie should start. There you go. Alright, you don't need to hear that. Alright, so as you can see, it works very well. Alright, let me hit on how the module works. So, whenever you turn on oops, whenever you turn on multi-game support, it's going to look for these two labels. If it doesn't find them, it's going to error out and tell you that it can't find it can't find them. First is pre-multi-game. So, some systems might be depending on the operating system or or what or the emulator, depending if you're on full screen, you know, there are lots of different variables, but you may need to put the emulator in a certain state, like a minimized state, in order for the GUI to come up without uh, maybe possibly um, flashing or flickering might, might occur. So you might have to minimize the emulator first. All right. Uh, this is where you put the code to do that. And it gets... Uh, this it'll only run this label if you select the game. If you cancel that, it won't run run this label. So you select the game. You want to minimize your, your emulator. You put that code in here. All right. After you select the game, it'll also then run everything in the multi game. All right. This is where you're gonna want your code to change your discs or your cartridges or whatever. Let's say you gotta go to file open in the emulator and find the ROM that way. This is where you, you would put all this information. As you can see here, I for PlayStation, I have the new Daemon Tools function. Uh, it's gonna unmount the existing image and it's gonna remount the new selected ROM that uh, is the variable filled when you select the game from the multi-game GUI. And that's all you need, you know. Uh, for CD-based systems, it should be pretty simple. Uh, for cartridge-based systems, you're going to have to put a little bit more code in. Um, I'm going to update modules as I have time. Uh, Zebra will be the only one uh, for now at launch because I've been spending all my time on the feature itself. Uh, I think that is... That is all. Can't think of anything else. Uh, if I have anything else, I'll, um, or if you have any questions, just ask on the form. Uh, and that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, all right? And hope you guys enjoy this feature uh, as much as I've enjoyed making it.